Hello, welcome to our webinar on providing powerful tips for small businesses. My name is Geraldine Fischardi and I work with small businesses and startups to help them become successful entrepreneurs. I help them get started, create powerful but simple business plans, adopt sales strategies and tactics for the business that are going to work. I help them to adopt the habits and goals that they need to be successful as entrepreneurs. But it's all about keeping it simple and keeping it focused on sales. I work with a variety of different industry sectors, anything from software to services, plumbers, painters, consultants, car dealers, therapists, tour guides, accountants, animal groomers. I've worked with them all. And my background is in technology and sales. I have 25 years experience of sales and marketing and have worked internationally in Ireland, the UK, Northern Europe, US and Australia. For the last five years though, I have worked quite a lot with startups and early stage companies. Um, but I still remember what it was like being in your own company when closing your first deals. The very first ever sale that I made was for £50,000 and it felt absolutely terrific. The largest sale I ever made was for 10 and a half million euros, but you still remember the first one, the thrill of closing that first deal. I do have qualifications in business administration, computers and stats and an MBA from Warwick, but you don't need a formal education to be a successful entrepreneur. You do need some skills in the area you want to work in. You need to have some vision as to what you can do better than everybody else. You need to be a good communicator, have some passion, some fire in your belly for what you're doing, and you need to be a risk taker. But most of all, you're gonna to need to be persistent. Success doesn't come easily. So let me talk a wee bit about some of the programs that I offer to help uh, startup companies and entrepreneurs. I do a four week boot camp that gives a lot of advice, methodology to follow and a motivational push to get going with setting that business up. I also offer the increasingly popular 10 day build your business plan. I'm a big believer in the importance of business planning, but also in keeping it really, really simple. The plan I promote is a one page plan and it's the planning process that goes into it that transforms your business. I also offer one-to-one -one coaching for entrepreneurs and small business owners and looking when business owners are looking to be more innovative in how they grow and get new customers and check out my website for details on these programs as well as a number of free resources that I offer such as the quiz do you have the right skills attitude personality to run your own business um, I give you a free one-page business template to get going with and some guidance and completing it and there are other recommendations and tools software um, for entrepreneurs, small business people. So let's get on to the power of three. What I want to talk about now are three things that you need to focus on for business success, three tools that can help you take your business to another level, but also three traps you want to avoid when starting your business or building your business. So let's move rapidly on. The first thing you have to focus on is yourself. You need to understand your your own powers, your own abilities, how well you are at organizing things, what sort of passion you have, what sort of emotional stability do you have to deal with the ups and downs of being an entrepreneur? What are your time management skills like, your people skills, your communication skills, financial skills, etc. All of this is really important to understand because once you assess yourself, you can start to figure out what do I need to do to build these skills? And I always recommend find a mentor or a coach that can help you plug those gaps and also challenge your thinking as you're setting up your business. But the first thing you have to focus on is you yourself and invest in yourself. The success or failure of your business will come down to you and how well you deal with all the challenges that you're going to face. The second thing that you need to focus on are customers. You really have to understand your customers inside and out. And this is an area that a lot of startup businesses fail on. They get so absorbed in the product or the service that they're creating that they forget to get out there and spend a lot of time talking to customers. So you need to go out and research. You need to define who your ideal customer is, understand what they want. You need to make lists of potential customers. What are they currently doing? Who are their current suppliers? What do they currently pay? What the value about their existing solutions? What will make them shift to you? So you need a very clear research plan with a lot of primary research that is talking to your customers directly. Now, when you talk to your customers, 
You can do it face to face, you can do it over the phone, you can do it online, but you got to do it. And you have to continue with this the whole way throughout building your company. And once you've talked to them, you define your ideal customer and then you know who you're going to be targeting for all your sales and marketing efforts. And let's not forget, your business will fail if you don't do sales, sales, sales the whole way through it. The next and final thing to focus on then are your competitors. Now this isn't as important as the first two, but it's still important. You want to get an insight on what your customers are or your customers are going to your competitors, what they're doing, what their competitors are doing well, what they're not doing well. If possible, go and talk to your competitors. Pretend you're going to be a customer. Get some more insight into what they're doing. How do they currently get customers? So make a list of all of your competitors, do a fair bit of research. Pull together a SWOT analysis of them and then figure out what are you going to do that's better? What is your unique selling point here? So there are the three things I want you to focus on. Let's talk about three tools that can help you build your business then. Now, the first tool I want to talk about is a tool called Really Simple Systems. Now, every time I start a new business or advise others on starting new businesses, I always tell them to set up a customer relationship management tool as soon as possible. This is a tool that allows you to store important customer or prospect information, track your actions, track all your contacts, track any comments that they make, any tasks that you set yourself to do for them, write down what the opportunities are, when you might need to call them back, and when they start becoming a customer, record your purchases and what support activities you need to do. So this is really important. You shouldn't be keeping this on the back of a piece of paper or in your head. You want to be taking this somewhere where you can analyze it and control it. And this is an invaluable tool, even during the really early research phase. Remember I said earlier, research, talk to potential customers and be selling. Now, the tool that I'm talking about here, Really Simple Systems, it lives up to its name. It's really simple to use. It has all the functionality that you need, and I've used quite a few of these types of tools. And also, it's pretty cheap as well. For the first 100 accounts that you have, you don't need to pay anything. So take a look at Really Simple Systems. The next tool I want to talk about is SurveyMonkey. Now, SurveyMonkey allows you to create very simple surveys that you can send out to prospects or customers to gather research for your business. I'm back in this research thing, research, research, research. But it can also be used to promote your general intelligence in your sector. But to get back to the research, it's critical when setting up a new business to talk to customers and gather their information. And I've always relied heavily on SurveyMonkey to help me do this vital primary research. Search. They have a free version, albeit there's some limitations on use. You can't have any more than 10 questions, but 10 is usually plenty for a survey. And once you create your surveys, a very easy tool to set up, you can then send the surveys out using emails, put it on your website, or you can enter details manually while you're conducting phone interviews or even face to face interviews. So take a look at SurveyMonkey. Now, third tool that I think is really invaluable, particularly if you're selling online, which let's face it, most of us need to do these days. And this is a tool called Lead Pages. Now, Lead Pages is a tool that allows you to capture information on your prospects and customers as they're engaging with you. So you set up Lead Pages linked to a website, It can be a very simple website that you set up and then you can use it as part of email, text, Facebook campaigns and you can easily, without any coding, create powerful landing pages for your prospects and customers that will encourage them to engage with you and to buy your product or service. So I would suggest take a look at this tool. It doesn't have a free version though, it does have a free trial for one month, but try it out. See if you can see it, how it's adding value to your business. And if so, I'd highly recommend it. So they're my top three tool recommendations for startups and small businesses. Let me give you a bonus recommendation, a little tool that I love and probably use every day. This is a tool called FastFox. Now, FastFox is from a New Zealand company called NCH, and it's basically a text expander where you can create short codes for entering data into reports, Word documents, PowerPoint, emails, online, and you put the code in and it expands out to a sentence or to a paragraph or whatever you've stored. So it 
really speeds your life up when you're communicating and putting together paperwork and documents. So I'd suggest buy it. It only costs a few pounds Come, and the tool you'll find once you get into it, you'll probably use it every day. So they're my tool recommendations for entrepreneurs or small companies. The three things I'd like to talk about now are the traps that a lot of businesses fall into. Now, the first of these traps is what I would call the perfect plan where you're putting together a really brilliant business plan and you're doing lots of research and lots of critical analysis of your competitors and lots of details on how you're going to operationally set up and the financials behind it. The problem is when you start life as an entrepreneur or business, life changes very rapidly. And that brilliant plan that you spent all that time putting together will very quickly become out of date and worthless. What I suggest is put together a simple plan. I always suggest you plan Plan. You should never fail to plan, but you plan quickly, put together a really simple document that's going to be of use in your business, and then as real life takes over, change the plan very quickly and move on. Plan again. So don't spend a lot of time on the really big business plans. If you want more information than that, I've got some great articles up on my website about planning. The second trap that a lot of businesses I find fall into is they talk to me and they say, oh, we're going to build our business through word of mouth. Word of mouth, that's what we're, how we're going to do it. And that's how Joe Bloggs down the road built his business, all word of mouth. We don't need to advertise. We don't need to market. Word of mouth, customer referrals, that's the way to do it. Now, on one level, I can't argue with that. Word of mouth is absolutely vital, but word of mouth, the way it used to be done, has changed so dramatically. You can't just wait for your customers to pass on referrals. You need to be encouraging them. People have so much data and so much information at their fingertips now that you have to be out there pushing and marketing yourself to get these referrals. You need to be rewarding people for these referrals. You need to do outbound marketing to get your name up above everybody else's name because information is so easy found nowadays. The other thing as well is about Joe Bloggs down the road that built his business through word of mouth is when you actually drill down a wee bit more you probably find a few things. You'll find that Joe Bloggs actually is involved in everything. Joe Bloggs maybe writes for local newspapers or magazines. He's part of the local chamber of commerce. He sponsors the local football team. He's out there getting his name out all the time. He's networking. So he's doing a lot of PR. So it's not just word of mouth he's relying on. There's loads of other things. It's just he's maybe not doing paid advertising in the local papers or paid advertising on Facebook, but he's doing loads of other things. And you need to be doing lots of other things as well. So please don't say to me, word of mouth is the only way you're going to do it. That won't work. The third trap that a lot of startup companies fall into is the rush to recruit. So you've started off doing a good job. You've got some early customers. You're delivering some great products and services. You need to get out there a bit more. You need to sell more, deliver more, market more. You need a people around you. You need a team around you, but you need a good team. You don't just want your, you know, your best friend's cousin that comes along that needs a job or the first person you bump into or the first person that you um, talk to when you're recruiting. You need to take this very seriously. If you build the wrong team around you, that has painful consequences for your business painful consequences possibly for you personally and will divert a lot of the time and energy that you need to be spent marketing, selling and creating the vision for your company. You're going to end up spending that time picking up the mistakes of the team around you, correcting those mistakes. So don't rush to recruit. Take recruitment slowly and carefully and make sure you get the right people around you. So that concludes my Power of Three presentation. Thanks for listening. I hope you've got some valuable ideas out of this. And if you want some more information, please go to my website at performeth.com. There's lots of resources there for startups and for new businesses. And if you want to talk to me personally, my email address is there, gfushardy at performeth.com. Happy to answer any questions or talk about any challenges. Thank you.